Hey there folks, Mike here. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a really cool numbers variable technique in Articulate Storyline. This relatively advanced technique is going to allow you to create a simple division calculator like the one that you see here. Now, don't worry, even if you are relatively new to Articulate Storyline, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to master this technique in a matter of no time. And let me tell you, when you do, it will open up a world of possibilities. So let's move on over to Storyline and let's start building this out. All right, so I'm here in Storyline and you might be thinking, hey, where did that cute little canvas size, that calculator size canvas, that slide go that you were just showing us? Well, I needed a little extra space, so I stretched it out, but worry not. And especially if you're new to Storyline, here's a cool tip. You can always go to the Design tab, Story Size, and you can choose the size of the slide. Really cool tip there. Now on the slide, you'll see that I added a few things already. I've got the area where I'm going to build the equation. So I've got a couple objects there. And I also added a button here to calculate. And I named it calculate. We're going to add a trigger to it soon. Uh, but speaking of naming, good production tip, always name your objects. Picture one. No, it's not picture one. Love it. Give it a name. It is called the division sign. Trust me, you'll thank yourself later. If you get into the habit of naming everything, that's going to make it a lot easier when it comes time to creating your triggers. All right, with that out of the way, let's build this thing. Now, if you're like me, when you first start off building equations, you're thinking, well, I'm going to need some number inputs, right? Absolutely. We go to the insert tab, controls, and we're going to add a numeric entry field. Now, if you're new to Storyline, simply click drag, and there's your numeric entry field. If you're new to Storyline, you may not know that every time you add a numeric entry field, a number variable is automatically created for you. So I'm going to click on the Manage Project Variables icon, and you'll see that numeric entry has been created. This is a number variable. I'm going to double click this, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to give it, since it's the top number in our uh, division problem, I'm going to call it the dividend. Of course, everybody knows that the top number is called the dividend, except me. I actually had to look it up. I had no idea. I just called it top number, but it's the dividend. So we'll call that the dividend. And I'm going to add one more and let's call that the divisor because uh, guess what? It is called the divisor, not the bottom button as commonly called by Michael. Um, so this is going to be the divisor. I hope I'm spelling that right for crying out loud. Um, and also what I'm going to do here is I'm going to name in our timeline, dividend and divisor. Again, good practice here to name these out. Seriously, is it O-R-E-R? -E I know, I know, don't come to me for English uh, spelling, especially with math terms. All right, so if we preview this now, check this out. I can put my number entry fields here, 34, five, I can go all day and do that, but now I need to calculate this, right? I need to create the ability for these numbers um, to divide. So I need the top number, our dividend, to be divided by the bottom number at the divisor. To do so, we'll create a trigger and we'll tie it to this button here. So let's add a trigger and we're going to adjust the variable. Now, if you start using number variables and calculations in Storyline, you are going to see this action a lot. So adjust variable. And we're going to adjust the dividend, the top number. What are we going to do? We're going to divide it by the bottom number, which is our divisor. So we're going to divide it by not a value, but by a variable, which is the divisor. So when we add a number here in the text entry field or this number entry field, the divisor is going to be set to that number. And when is this going to happen? When the user clicks our calculate button. Let's click OK and let's preview this. This is really awesome. It's going to work. I'm going to divide 45 by mm, five, but check this out. Here's the first challenge, the first roadblock that I ran into and what caused me to stop for a while because I couldn't figure it out. This number, we just told Storyline, adjust this number right here, 45 divided by five. And what's gonna happen is 45 is going to become nine, as it should, it works, it divided it. But when I'm creating a calculator like this, I don't want this number to change. I want it to stay looking like this. I want that nine to appear down here underneath. How do we make that happen? That, my friends, is where the super awesome advanced number variable technique comes in that I'm going to show you right now. Conceptually, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this calculation and we're going to do it behind the scenes. We're going to leave these numbers just as they are. But what we're going to do 
is we're going to take this number right here, the dividend, and we're going to pass this variable. We're going to set another variable, which we will soon create. We'll pass this number to that variable, and we'll do the calculations behind the scenes, and then we will pass that number back over here underneath. Let's go take a look at what that looks like. It's really cool, and it's really not all that complicated. All right, so the first step in this really cool technique is to add another number variable. I'm going to add a number variable, and I'm going to call this one dividend copy. Because what I want to do is I want to take that dividend, and I want number on the top, and I want to pass it behind the scenes to another variable. Really, I'm just making a copy of it in a sense, so I'm just going to call it dividend copy. Click OK. And now if you're new to Storyline, Here's what I would suggest. Insert a text box, and we're going to insert a reference to the variable. When I first started using Storyline, I wasn't sure what this meant. Basically, it simply means I'm going to Storyline's going to show us the value of the variable at all times. So we'll be able to see the value. So I have dividend. I have dividend copy. I want to pass the value of dividend over here because this is the number I want to calculate. I don't want this number to be impacted. I want it to stay. If I type in 45, I want it to stay 45. I don't want it to be impacted upon. This one, however, I do. So I need to pass the value over. We're going to use a trigger to do so. We're going to adjust the variable, dividend copy. We're going to change it. We're going to assign it the value of the dividend variable, okay? So we're simply saying, hey, Storyline, pass the value of dividend over to dividend copy. Assign it the value of dividend. Easy enough, but when do we do that? When the control loses focus on the dividend input box. Wait a minute, Mike, what does that mean? Control loses focus? Control loses focus simply means that the mouse is no longer focused. You are no longer focused upon that box. So in a sense, we've clicked out, all right? So let's click OK. I'll show you what this means. I'll show you what it does. So I come in and I click. All right, now we are focused upon this. I type 45. Once I click outside of the box, the control is no longer in focus. And remember, our trigger says pass this value. So adjust this variable, assign it the value of this variable when we click outside. So I type 23. I click out 23. 67, 67. Pretty awesome. Look at that. My friends, you are passing variables. Pretty slick. Now, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to divide this number by this number down here. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. Very simply, we're going to come up to our original calculation here, our original trigger. And now instead of dividing the dividend by the divisor, we're going to divide dividend copy by the divisor. So we are going to adjust variable, dividend copy, divide that by the divisor. This slight change, this small subtle change, this is what allows this number, the dividend, to remain constant and not change visually in this calculator. Okay, so we've passed that variable value. 45, I click outside, look, it has been passed. Now I type 5 down here. And I'm going to calculate, and we're going to divide 45 here, the dividend copy, by 5. And look at that. It changes. Perfect. So what we've just done is we have done a calculation behind the scenes. You could probably think of this as sort of like a short-term memory. It's working, working memory, not short-term, working memory in the human brain. Um, it's working behind the scenes. It's calculating, okay? It's doing this for us. Now, we want this answer to appear here, right? I guess technically we could go like this. The outcome would work. Okay, so 45 divided by not. Oh, wait a minute. That's why we can't just do that because the outcome would work, but we're still passing the value here when we click outside and it's going to show up down there. That doesn't look good. So to finish this off, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add one more variable and we're going to add it number variable and we'll call it well, of course, we'll call it quotient because everyone except Mike Enders knows that that's the name of um, the answer. And we're going to insert a reference right down here like we just did with dividend copy. Insert reference to quotient. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to add one more trigger, and we're going to pass the value of dividend copy down to quotient. However, it only happens after it calculates. So this isn't going to change when the control here loses focus like this will. 
I type here, I click outside, this gets changed, then we calculate, then this value gets passed down to quotient on the calculate button push, okay, or click. So we add a trigger, adjust variable quotient, let's assign it the value of dividend copy when the user clicks calculate. And you'll wanna make sure that this happens second. So trigger order here will be important. You'll want to set this um, below to make sure it fires after we do the calculation. Now watch this, my friends. This is really super slick. Look at that, 45 divided by, see, it passed the value when I clicked outside. I add my divisor here, I calculate. And now we've got nine, we got nine. But now when I go back here and click, look at that, it passes it, still not impacting here. 56, calculate, look at that. How smooth and awesome is that, my friends? You have just created a really awesome um, simple division calculator, but an awesome background technique here with passing variables, doing the calculation behind the scenes, and then passing the variable back up visually here up on the front. Okay, so one last thing here that we need to add into our project, and it has to do with our calculate button. Check this out. If I divide, say, 23 by 4, I get my answer. But now, if I click calculate again, I want 23 and 4 to remain as they are, and I want the answer to remain as it is. But since we pass the value, okay, of 5.75 down here, if I click calculate again, the triggers are going to calculate now 5.75 by four. And look at that, it continues to calculate. We don't want that to have happen. We want the same number to be retained here. So what we're going to do is this, we're going to add one more uh, trigger onto our calculate button and it is going to look like this. It is going to be to once again, we're going to adjust the variable we are going to adjust dividend copy. We're going to assign it the value of the variable dividend when the user clicks calculate. So what's happening here, since triggers fire from top to bottom, it's going to do the division, it's going to set the quotient, and then it's going to once again pass this variable back over. And we want that to have happen. So watch this, 23 divided by five, I calculate. Notice how this is automatically stays at 23, but, and we didn't even see it because it happened so fast, the answer got passed down here. So that's what we wanna have happen. So now if the user clicks calculate again, the number stays. So just one last trip, uh, trick, I should say, to add into your project. This technique, really opens up a whole lot of possibilities. It is the base that you will need when you want to do other things like performing uh, running calculations. And again, there are other things that you'll need to add. There may be times that you'll need to clear out some of your working memory here um, with some other triggers. Um, that will come in the future. Get comfortable with this technique, pass variables behind the scenes, and then bring them up to the front. If you've seen calculators and people have created fully functioning calculators in the storyline, this is the base technique that is happening behind the scenes. It will open up a world of possibilities for you. Thanks for sticking with me, my friends. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please stop on by the Articulate uh, eLearning Heroes community forums. Ask your questions. We will be there to help you out. Take care.